Yo, 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 yo. What's going on? What's going on? It's Terrell, Hall of Fame, D-Line, TBKC, and all that sweet, beautiful, wonderful shit. And I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to yawn about 30 times. Whew, I felt that one coming on. I felt that one coming on. It is very, very early. Um, Very early. But anyway, I tell you what. If, you know, if if you really, if you really look at this thing, some people be like, man, you hard on the OGs. I don't think I'm hard enough on the OGs. And some of the OGs is just full of shit. Let's put it that way. You know, last week I went off on who, oh, Christina. And she's not an OG, by the way. But all of these dudes is clowns. Let's just put it that way. And and I, I won't name all of them off, but 92% of all ABKC judges is full of shit. Uh, their leader, Dave Woodrow uh, Wilson, is, is full of shit. <laughs> I mean, we can just go on and on and on because the one thing, and I, and I challenge y'all to say this, and I, I mean, I challenge y'all to find this. While they talk about bigger bone and bigger dogs and, oh, not, you know, they keep on taking shots at the older dogs to even see... Remy, I mean not Remy, but to see Dave. What's going on? He is tired as hell. But to see Dave, you know what I'm saying, take a shot, you know what I'm saying, at a dog like Pokemon talking about uh you know, old Samson is this and that and the other and to try to push blue and this, that and the other. Come on man. Stop it. Cause first of all you're fucking lying. Let's just put it that way. You know, because the, the, at the end of the day, like I could, I could run off some of the stats, but y'all have to remember that the old dogs come from an era where they were all big. Something they don't want to tell you. Like for real, Little Roe would be a standard today. Yeah, the same Little Roe who's known as being basically the godfather of the pocket today would be a standard. Little Roe was 17 inches. Little Roe would be a standard today. 17 inches. You know what I'm saying? A very, very well muscled 75 pounds is what he was. You know, and that's and that's when I had him and I put him there. That's so I know what uh what his weight was. But the dog was chiseled, you know, nice big blocky head, super wide frame, super tight, 75 pounds, but had the type of frame that we often believe he could have put on another seven or eight pounds and been very, very just, you know, chiseled. You know, these was dogs with tucks and you could still see their rib cages and shit like that. But, you know, to, 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 to say nowadays that these dogs are so much more bigger and you know what I mean? It's ridiculous because a dog like that's why Little Row was called Little Row. You know, a lot of the dogs back then had a very, very good size, you know, not fat, but in shape. And the dogs could move and could breathe and everything. So now what you're seeing today is, is that you see these guys always try to put down the dogs from the past to try to put bring these dogs in. But they're playing this mind trick with everybody because while they try to pump up these dogs, they don't bring up facts about the dogs. You know, and this will seem like a repeat video, but it's very, very true. Because I don't care who you are, Kenneth put up videos and so-called ABKC judges and experts and handlers came on there and you didn't see not one of them son of a bitches say nothing about health. You didn't see not one of them say nothing about confirmation. All they talked about was how big the dog was. And I, and I told uh, Mark this, and that's why I said this is a two-part thing. I told Mark this, and this was the realest shit that I could ever say. You go to bodybuilding. If any of y'all are a fan of bodybuilding, it's the same exact thing, but we saw it in people compared to dogs. And we saw the results. This always happens. If you go to the to the double muscled Belgium, and I'm talking about the cows, they're seriously unhealthy, even though this is a genetic mutation. They're seriously unhealthy. They have a hard time surviving. If you go to, uh, you know what I mean? Um, the back to bodybuilding, like we talked about, Ronnie Coleman, one of my all time favorites, you know, this man is in his fifties. He can't even walk. He can't, 
He's walking with a double cane, and most of the time he's in a scooter now, known for being the 300-pound mass monster. He was this, he was that. The man can't even walk anymore. He can't function anymore. You know what I mean? You've seen in his documentary where some of the bodybuilders, including, you know, probably definitely one of my all-time three favorite uh, 2008 Mr. Olympia, Dexter Jackson, specifically talks about, you know, a lot about protecting your body, lifting lighter, eating healthier, not getting overweight during the bodybuilding process, which a lot of bodybuilders are known for putting on a ton of mass and then cutting down. Whereas he, he stayed in shape year round, which uh, Sean Ray believed a lot in too. And now you're seeing more and more bodybuilders like that to where if you see them in the off season, they don't get a lot of them don't get to be up to uh, what was used to be like 50, 60 pounds over their their uh, their show weight. But even at that, we are still seeing a lot of these guys die because they're still putting on so much muscle that it's hard for them to function. And then keep that in mind, you know, that these guys, some of these guys stay in such good shape that in the off season, their body fat doesn't go over 15% and they're still dying because as human beings, as uh, living things in this world, a body mass index goes to the point to where it just can't exceed a certain level. The reason it can't exceed a certain level is because of the heart and the lungs, your cardiovascular system, your inner workings are only meant to carry a certain amount of mass. It's no different from, from a dog. This is one of the reasons why we see a huge problem in this breed with enlarged hearts. The reason that their hearts are enlarged so badly is because they're constantly being overworked because it's too much mass. Some of these dogs, for, for whatever reason, some of them have, have been done that way genetically and, and, and others have been done that way through a needle. But no matter which way we have derived at this issue, the problem is, is too much mass on a frame is destined to be able to, I mean, is destined to make this dog stressed out in the cardiovascular system most importantly the heart this is one of the reasons why it's such every, not every uh breathing issue is a soft uh palate issue some of the breathing is because it's suffocation it's suffocation by way of the fact that if, if for those of you who don't understand what's going on there it's a simple thing of we breathe to get oxygen Oxygen in our blood is how we live. It's a whole process, and I'm not being a smart ass. It's a whole process. The more mass you have, the more oxygen you need. It's a lot more stress on the lungs. It's a lot more stress on the heart to pump this uh, oxygen slash blood through your system constantly overworking the heart never gets to rest the lungs never get to actually rest because they're always going at a probably two to three times capacity that they would normally go on to support the mass of whatever it is whether it's a human being or whether it's a dog this is why a lot of these dogs hearts even a dog that you would think would go out and you see these posts and he was young and I don't know why he just fell dead is because you can't see the problem initially, but they are being overworked. This is a stupid plan to try to build an animal. It is. They will never have longevity. Nothing has longevity that has that type of size. Look it up. Mastiffs generally do not live long lives. And they're bigger dogs that have a normally bigger um a, a normally bigger um, cardiovascular system the very very reason why i never bought a great day and i love the way great days look i love you know i've seen some beautiful great days but most great days don't make it past seven most great Danes start to go downhill around four, four to five years old because their heart cannot support that, that body. They all, no, no, I'm not gonna say all, but most great Danes have bad hearts. Most mastiff breeds eventually, uh, they go down and they die in that seven to eight range uh, themselves. If you look at it, the miniature dogs, like the little poodles and shit, they'll live 18, 20 years because they don't have the type of mass and function uh, that that's killing their hearts. 
it's just that simple you know now as i went back to these ogs you know they're all full of shit and they know what's going on they know what's happening in front of their eyes if y'all don't think that these dudes don't know what's going on they they're you, you kidding yourself I don't care who they are. The same dudes who are telling you they pushing this agenda, side, 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 side. They're not showing you a bunch of old dogs that are living forever. They show you that they, they, they're not showing you any of that. They sit in the ring and they see if you're an ABKC judge, and I'm not gonna call out names, but if you're an ABKC judge and you sit there and you got so much knowledge, why? What big dogs do you see coming in the ring, moving effortlessly with great breathing? Why can't y'all even turn on real sound and y'all always got music and shit over these dogs? How many dogs do we see in the ring that have their mouths open and they're and they're trying to breathe? Uh, you know, a little heavier already, just showing. Why is it that over the last, let's say, 10 years, uh, we will go a step further. We'll say over the last 15 years, we've seen the, the lifespan of these dogs go from dogs that, like I say, at Killer Noise Kennels, I think Debo, uh, excuse me, Debo was 18 years old. Little Ro lived to be about 16 years old. You know, you had more recently Denzel, 15 years old i think uh, bistro was 12 years old i can i can go on and on and on from from the so-called old school dogs where you they were living into double digit years and then you bring in the dogs that started this whole extreme thing which is another funny thing because that's all they say now is extreme but most of them don't even live to be seven a lot of them are dead at five you know, we've seen a stretch of the Dax dogs where in general, the Dax dogs were only living to be about five or six years old. And when I say in general, don't give me the few that are happen to be living. Let's let's not start that shit. Let, let's not start this thing of, oh, did this one live to be? Because the grand majority of Dax's son at this point are dead. The ones that are all well known, you don't see too many people around here anymore pushing a Dax son. They, you just don't. It's a reason for it. The reason you don't see them pushing the Dax son is because the grand majority of those dogs are dead now. The ones that should be eight, nine years old, they're dead. Most of his best sons died just like he did in the five to six year old range. Now we see with Rocco, Rocco is living a longer life, but his kids are not. A lot of his blood, a lot of the, the, the blood that, that's behind Rocco, we're seeing them. We seen it last year, it became a topic last year. They're falling out around three years old. You are literally pushing the breed to extinction that once it gets to the point that these dogs are struggling to live three years, that's ridiculous. And all of these OGs know it, but they still tell you to use the blood. They still don't bring up the health issues. They still don't bring up the medical issues. They don't bring up anything. They just bring up high dollar. And the funniest part about it is, is if you look at them and you look at their agendas, all these dudes are pushing those same type of dogs. Even dudes who I named on the list who had dogs that were living forever, now they're pushing dogs that they know are causing the issue. But it's because I got to get money. It's the same thing that, you know, uh, the only difference between uh, Raul you know, and these cats is that just bottom line is he came out and said it with the Burroughs is that it was about getting him some money. You know what I mean? A lot of these other dudes, they act like they're here for the uh, the betterment of the breed. They trying to get their money and they're willing to sacrifice the health of the breed. They're willing to sacrifice the breed. This is y'all OGs. I'm not going to start naming them off, but anybody who's telling you to breed an unhealthy dog, it they're willing to sacrifice the breed to buy them a new Cadillac. That's just, it's just that simple. No responsible breeder is going to keep on pushing more and more and more and more size. I'm not saying that the dog, before y'all come on this video with y'all dumb shit, I'm not saying that the dogs have to be skinny. I'm not saying because none of these bullies are skinny. You know, my, my best classic, which was Castro. Castro, in his prime, was like 85 pounds. It's a heavier dog, you know what I mean? Not a small dog. 85 pounds is not a small dog, you know what I'm saying? Not a, not at all. You know, Denzel at his highest weight was like 78 pounds. 
not a small dog. Like I told y'all, Mandela and his best weights, well over 100 pounds, like 105 to 108 pounds. I always believed 108 pounds was too heavy on him. He started to look a little fattish, but consistently maintained throughout even his, even his younger years, you know, uh, before he would just start to get fat. You know what I mean? Now, you know, getting older, dog, when good dogs get older, they go through the stages. They start to get fat. Then when it's getting closer to the end, they start to get skinny. Well, you know, but even when he was a younger, leaner dog, man, shit, he was always 100 pounds. You know? Always 100 pounds. It just, make, it just, it just trips me out, you know what I'm saying? That now you see these dudes and they talk about, oh, those dogs are too little. Those dogs was, I mean, come on, man. Pokemon was a hundred pound dog, but now you want 130 pounds. It's a happy medium. It's a, it's a point where you put on size. And trust me, I would love to put on more size. Some of y'all was laughing in the comments because y'all saw that um, I was on Marco's thing and I was talking and he came on there and liked it where I said, I'm gonna add some more of that blood. Of course, I'm gonna add some more of that blood. Why wouldn't I? You know what I mean? I always love Marco's stuff. I'm just gonna put a little more size on it like uh, like Denzel, you know what I mean? That, that's my thing. He has his thing, but I don't see anything wrong with his thing. You know, his if his dogs were identified as American bullies, that style, that look and everything was identified as American bullies when it first started, how do you try to eliminate it now? You know what I mean? It, it keeps the basis of what the American bully is, size, frame, and everything. But the most importantly, health. The dogs are still very, very, very healthy. You know, I would like a little more size, but to go into this whole thing of extreme, 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 it's double talk because... You got rid of the extreme class. We got rid of the extreme class for a reason. And this is why it's so ridiculous nowadays. And this is actually the third video in this thing. But it's so ridiculous nowadays to see that we promote something that they already said was a problem. This is your bully heroes. You know what I mean? Wealth over health. This is your bully heroes. And I'm gonna go to the third video, man. So that way I can go ahead and get me some sleep for a minute. But uh, <laughs> we'll talk about this. Peace.